As we develop the deltopectoral interval, we can clear up the subdeltoid plane here, and we'll retract that in the lateral direction. We can put an Army Navy underneath the pec major, and now we're down to the clavi pectoral fascia. You can see the tip of the coracoid here, the strap muscles here, with muscle that's actually lateral to the tendon. Next, we're going to work our way underneath this tissue so that we can find and identify the axillary nerve. Biceps tendon is here. The dares are being used now as skids, a number three rich on the deltoid. Now with careful extension and external rotation, the humeral head should be deliverable into the wound. And there it is. Saws on the field. We've released the capsule off of the back side of the subscap here, so now we can actually palpate on the anterior rim and clear back onto the neck of the glenoid. This is really critical for exposure, so we'll put this bank art retractor in at this point, and we have a nice exposure of the anterior rim and the glenoid labrum, as we see down here. Here's the 44, and you can see that it insets nicely into the remaining labrum here. So a 44 will be a good size or a good approximation of that glenoid articular surface. And we'll use this to establish the diameter of the meniscal allograft. Suture placement has been completed. You can see the graft suspended above the glenoid itself. And again, that facilitated suture placement. Now we're going to parachute or slide the graft down to the glenoid face, and as we do that, we'll take up the slack in our sutures. And we want to put that right down the top, right down the pipe. Excellent, okay. All of the subscapular sutures have been passed through these bone tunnels, and now as we pull lateral traction on these through the tunnels, you can see how the subscap cinches back up right to its anatomical site. <laughs>